welcome to the MBS Show. I am your host, Toy Tan1324. You may be wondering where Norman is. Well, he's right here with me. Oh, hello. I'm not hosting today. It's Terraston. <laughs> I was forced to po- uh, host, by the way. It's That's what fun. you get for being a Pokemon, talking about Pokemon. Hey, it was Norman's idea to review this. <laughs> kind of. And also joining us is Silverquill. Our little Torterra is growing up. I'm so proud. Uh, but why are you not producing the marijuana on your shelf? <laughs> I'm not that little, and if I was little, I wouldn't be able to produce that stuff. Well, work on that. I'm telling you, though, nothing's coming out of this tree. Nothing comes out of it? Why do you have it? For decoration. For life support. (laughs) That too. It supports so many lives. Like, I probably have some birds in here right now. Bulbasaur's much better. Exactly. And last but not least is Sapphire Hartong. Hi. I got you by the balls. (sighs) <sighs> the Pokeballs! <laughs> teehee, teehee. Oh, you were making all kinds of jokes like that, the uh, I don't want to hear it, no. <laughs> what about the blue balls? Yep. Was you make I? my balls so blue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember anything like that. I have no idea what you mean. Mm-hmm, Sure. Yeah, what do you mean? I get, I made I made you a little picture and I gave you a blue ball on Twitter. Are you sure you don't want to check your phrasing on that? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Too late. <laughs> I'm sorry, Torterra. You got to check yourself, or else you wreck yourself. But anywho, anywho, uh, anywho, Tara, what are we doing this week? We are going to be looking at the Pokemon movie three, Spell of the Unknown, which is also a Patreon sponsor by Master of Lag. So thank you a lot, my friend. Uh, we'll do this right. <laughs> we'll do this one right. Well, I'm, do- I'm doing my best here. You better. Oh, you're doing, you're doing fine. It's more our own foul up uh, in the past. It's not really you guys. You... It's me. Like it seriously, was all on me. Very much on you. <laughs> so true. <laughs> wow. <exactly. laughs> Back the bus up, why don't you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, Into the pokeballs. <laughs> oh, the pokeballs. Why? Why does it have to be my nightmare? Because you decided to join this. <laughs> but anywho, get on track, get on track. <laughs> so, uh, how about we dive into first impressions of this movie, Norman? Yeah, so I remember watching this one when I was a kid or teenager or something like that. And it was a lot of fun. Like, I've been following the Pokemons. Like, um, first was um, the first movie. It was a lot of fun. Second was a lot of fun because they're like, oh, um, it was the original red, blue, green, and yellow, and then like gold and silver. And with Entei, it was like, oh, it was gold and silver age, and also adding more things. And I was so confused when I first watched it. Like, what the hell is going on? Who is this little girl? What, 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 what? And yay, Pokemon, shouting, screaming, yay. I wish I was in the US so I can get the free cards and so on and whatnot. So yeah, those were my impressions watching this. And how about you, Silver? Well... Back in my day, we had 150 Pokemon, and we were glad for it. Meh. Now you got all these bunnies and, and creatures, and, and, and turtles and tortoises and trees. <laughs> Is there a problem with that? <laughs> I, I did, actually. <laughs> Not if you can't help me with my glaucoma. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching Pokemon when it was first, first airing in America, and then I fell out of phase with it. So this was a fun little way to get back in touch uh, when it first when I first saw it, which I believe was on home video. I didn't see it in the theaters. But this is a very enjoyable movie. It's got great imagery. And the character of Entei in particular is very fascinating to me. So we'll get into that. But there's also an interesting story behind the story. Yeah, that I had to tell you. But uh, we'll have more on that later. Yes. And how about you, Safi? You said you have a close heart to this movie. What is your first impression on this? Well, nothing but pure nostalgia. Mostly, I don't know. I watched this movie and it takes me back to a time back when VHS was still a thing and I'd just be watching after we rented the movie at not a blockbuster, but we rented it at my grocery store. 
back then, like before Redbox and all that, my grocery store used to have an entire section in the back that was nothing but like movies you could rent and it was great and they had candy like it was a movie theater and everything <laughs> and oh, I remember cool. having a I, I remember having a strange nightmare about it one time with Pokemon as like you know they they also like rented out video games and whatnot and I remember nothing but anyways I'm I'm getting back on track I'm off track. Anyways, when I think of this movie, I think of that time when, you know, I'd be renting- I was only allowed to pick one movie and they had an entire shelf dedicated to all the Pokemon movies at the time. And I think, like, the last movie that they had up there was Pokemon Heroes. Like, I, I think I was, like, eight at the youngest, like, before it closed down. Oh, this sucks. But, yeah, I, I remember- those being my favorite movies during the time. I really like the characters, and, you know, Ash actually has a motivation this time around. He's pissed, man. He's pissed. He's out for revenge. <laughs> Ash Ketchum is back, and he's out for blood. Yeah, pretty uh, much. And look out. I think he has a boomstick. <laughs> when you need a boomstick, when you got small creatures to do your bidding. Yeah, but yeah. a boomstick is much better in a Necronomicon. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't mind a Pokemon to have a boomstick. <laughs> boomstick, well, I choose you. <laughs> I mean, we already have a Pokemon Sword and Shield coming soon. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if all of a sudden there's a Pokemon Gun version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a third version. Like what? Sword and Shield? No, Gun. <laughs> and I mean, there is a boomstick on death battles, but <laughs> can you imagine? Boomstick, use beer chug. Oh, God. <laughs> Way ahead of you. <laughs> Please. Oh wow! Uh, anyway, I'm I'm derailing us. Sorry. For my first impressions, I remember seeing this back when I was very young, and actually, I still have the VHS of this movie. Oh, cool! But uh, my first impressions, you know, I was young. I was just ooh, legendary Pokemon. Ooh, this one talks. Why does it sound like Yami Yugi from Yu-Gi-Oh? <laughs> <laughs> Is that green really? Yeah, Entei's voiced by Dan Green. I, oh, I never wow. actually <laughs> watched enough Yu-Gi-Oh! as a kid. I mostly grew up on VHS tapes. Like, not that we didn't have cable or anything, but my brother was eight years older than me. Take that as you will. All right, then. I didn't get the TV a lot. <laughs> it's cool. Um, it just puzzles me a lot. Whenever I see the English version of Yu-Gi-Oh! and I see Pokemon and like, huh... Why does Kaiba sound like Brock? Like, why? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, two and two never put, never got in my head. I, I never put it together as a kid. <laughs> but the the movie to back then was really good, and some of the moments I still remember while I was young, and still to this day, I remember and looking back at the movie before today, just ah, oh, the memories. <laughs> awesome! 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 And for those of you hey, that haven't seen this movie, you could uh, just go away now and go quickly watch it and then you can come back. <laughs> and now you're back. I hope you enjoyed the movie. Yeah, did you remember that moment? Oh, that moment was fun. And then there was a plot twist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you see that legendary Pokemon comes out and then there's a gun. Like, what the hell? It's all like, my name is Dan Green. <laughs> <laughs> That'd actually be pretty cool having Dan Green as your neighbor. <laughs> Yeah, and then, like, he's always talking about the Shadow World, something like that. The Shadow Realm? Yeah, Shadow Realm. Yeah, talking about... <laughs> ah, please. <laughs> Alright, so, let's dive right into this. Alright. So, we start off with a great big mansion, and inside this mansion, we have a father and a daughter, and the father is also voiced by Dan Green. And they're talking about how in this book, people draw legendary Pokemon, what they think they'll look like. And then the father's trying to act like Entei. And it's kind of obvious what's going to happen later on. Well, it was kind of like a Disney movie. A loving family with a, with a father figure? You're doomed. <laughs> You're going to die. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Not only man. that, there's no mother around. Oh, no, no, oh, God, no. Oh, I know I remember what about this movie. Oh, God. Uh, but that kind of ties into the story behind this story that the uh, the writer for the show wanted noted that there weren't a lot of stories that celebrated the bond between a father and daughter. There was a father and son or mother and daughter or even 
mother and son, but not father and daughter. So this was his attempt to balance the scales a little. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it kind of works. It kind of works. At least it's not like The Lion King where it's no father and son moment. Oh, yeah. They're, they're like, oh, Simba, whatever the sun touch is yours. <laughs> I don't know how to phrase it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to have to know that phrase, Norman, because the remake's coming out soon. Oh, you mean the CG movie? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the one that's totally not live action, even though people say it's live action. What? No, it's not live action. Come on. Talking lions? That's preposterous. Next thing you're going to tell me, Will Smith is going to be the genie. Yeah, about that. (laughs) Oh, no. Carry on. So, as I was saying, the father and daughter are having such a great time until the father gets an email that there's more research about the unknown that has been discovered. Ooh. I guess you can say... It's still unknown, then. Hey, Pokemon puns are my thing. (laughs) Well, I just want to know, why did they spell unknown without the K? Because it's a Pokemon. Okay, Silver, you're really asking this when the first generation, they literally have a Pokemon named Seal that's spelled (laughs) C-E-E-L. Well, it's no excuse for bad grammar. See me after class, Pokemon. (laughs) Well, I I guess the Seal was kissed by a rose. But did you know that when it snows, <laughs> my, my eyes become enlarged and I'm suddenly an anime character. Oh my god. Just keep going, Torterra. Roll with the punches, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's one, thing, that one good thing that Safi mentioned, though. Because, yes, there is a sh- seal that that is named with S-E-E-L. But then there's also a spiel that has a P in it. It's literally spelled S-P-E-A-L. And it's a better Pokemon. So the the moral here is that Pokemon is killing our uh, English. Yes. Wait, yes, th- pretty much. This is how this is how the foreign invaders get us. But I thought that was already done in school. But anywho, so it turns out that the unknown are based off of ancient alphabets. You got the uh, A B Cs. So it's like easy as one two three. Yes, exactly. I don't think unknown or they come in numbers. No, I don't think they don't. Like they they don't have numbers back in those days. <laughs> no, but I mean they they come in a lot of numbers. By numbers, I mean a lot of unknown because one of them gets taken away when he picks up a bunch of puzzle pieces or not puzzle pieces, but it's like Scrabble but with unknown. Pretty oh, much, yeah. This reminds me of Yugi and the Millennium Puzzle. Oh no. <laughs> Well, they just keep spinning around. It's like, I can't tell what kind of word this is. I mean, these guys would be lousy at Scrabble. Stop changing the words. <laughs> I've, I've, I've already got a triple word point. Nah. No, I got nothing. <laughs> yeah, totally. You guys have never played words with friends then. Oh, I have. I have. It's a lot of fun. But wait, if you want to play words with friends, don't you have to need a, well, Facebook account or something like that? No, there, there's an app for that. Oh yeah, you you won't like playing with me, Silva. I I I I play hard. Wow, dude, could you? Would you like to rephrase that? Oh, you don't <laughs> like playing with me, Silva, because I play rough. Oh, <laughs> thank you. How forward? <laughs> Come on, we're talking about Pokemon here, and you guys are getting dirty. <laughs> are you really that surprised? No, I'm not. <laughs> but the viewers are. I'm sorry, Torterra. Anyone who's seen cast form knows that you have to have a dirty mind in Pokemon. Uh, I mean, he's got a point there. (laughs) Carry on. Well, then. Can't help but do this Yu-Gi-Oh! reference because the father gets sent to the Unknown Realm. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, my voice gives me strength. (laughs) At least he's not saying, you know, it's time to duel or anything. (laughs) Not yet. Oh, wouldn't it be crazy where the father that's sent into the unknown realm is actually Yugi being in the Yu-Gi-Oh world and once the series is done he gets back? <laughs> hmm. So so basically he crash lands and you go, What happened to my hair? <laughs> why am I friends with a Brooklyn kid? Yeah. Brooklyn why, why Rage. Still... <laughs> anyway, we keep derailing. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, we're talking about Pokemon here. We're just getting off topic. Always talking about something else. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, well, it was a lot of fun when they mentioned that the girl's father is gone. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, that's that's really fun. That's like Sean Freud in the extreme. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
what I don't understand though is that later on we see her playing with the unknown alphabets and here I am thinking why would you bring ancient Pokemon letters to your kid's house? <laughs> oh, this is something fascinating. I'm looking at one of the screens and uh, it seems that she knows her ABC because she's spelling out Papa and Mama. Yes. I'm just pointing it out. But she does it in a Scrabble way. See, she puts Papa from left to right and then Mama from top to bottom. And also me? Oh, that's cool. Oh yeah, she did put me at the over there too, at the little corner. See, I know my Pokemon ABCs. Okay, so if I type something out in unknown language, would you understand it? Uh, possibly. I can try, but I'm not great at it. I, well, I I'll think... do that later, not now. <laughs> yeah. uh, but anywho, carry on. Well, with one tear drop later, after she cries that she lost her mother and father, the unknown come to her aid to help her out. And it's not like she's scared at all. She's, you know, she's young. It's like, oh my god, there's so many floating eyes looking at me. Do you all want to play with me? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a Stephen King novel. Come play with us, Molly. That, that's, some that's not a word that I would do as a kid, so yeah. <laughs> not me. If I see a bunch of floating eyes, I'd be scared. And there's Sweetie Pots on demand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, now you notice. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yep, you think we wouldn't notice? No, not really. I've gotten well, away with others before. Oh, no. Really? No, no. <laughs> Sweetie Bot got them all. Yep, Sweetie Bot, catch them all. Sweetie, we carry on, Tara. <laughs> well, um, so as she's getting to look over at the unknown, the unknown start making uh, some sort of crystal fortress based off of Molly's imagination. And during her imagination, she looks at the book of Entei and thinks of her father and she wants her father to come back. And then, surprise, the unknown make an Entei appear that sounds just like her father. But it could also mean that it's Yugi. <laughs> Yay! It's time to duel. Except he doesn't say it's time to duel. Instead, he says, I am Entei. Oh, yeah, I'm Entei. Oh, boys. But by the power of imagination... I have Dan Green's voice! <laughs> <laughs> and then after we cut through the title screen, we cut to our main heroes, Ash, Misty, and Buck, with that little mouse Pokemon Pikachu. Yay. With that little gosh darn mouse. <laughs> Get me out of here! Haha, <laughs> 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 I was being a mouse before it was cool! <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you yet, Pikachu! And your little Ash, too! <laughs> Hey, at least the, me and Pikachu have something in common. We don't like to be inside Pokeballs. That's where you're lame. Uh, boys, but anywho. Oh, sorry. Anyway, so they seem to discover a new friend who's named Lisa, who is also voiced by a voice actress named Lisa. <laughs> Coincidence? I think Probably. not. And while they're battling, we get the, uh, I don't know, I wouldn't say remixed version, but like, uh, pumped up mu version of the Johto theme song, which is pretty catchy. I still remember it. That was like the best theme song of the whole franchise. Really? I still yeah, like the original. Oh, you can never beat the original. Oh, yeah. The original's still good. Yeah, we'll agree to disagree. <laughs> yeah, I'm with Silver. I kind of like this version more than the original. No, I'm talking about the original first movie. Like, gotta be the very best. I'm not talking about this Johto. But that's besides the point. So... After their battle, they talk about how uh, there's a she, she's going to a place called Greenfields, I believe, or I could be wrong. And she says how everything's pretty over there. The flowers, the view, and then Box just going out saying, oh, there's is there also a lot of pretty girls? <laughs> because, of course, it's Brock. Yeah, Brock likes every girl. Even if they're psycho. Oh. <laughs> Especially if they're psycho. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, I, yeah, I just definitely. have to point something out because time has passed and I think Brock has found his true love from the Aloha region. Oh, really? What's has her he? name? I, I, I actually know. <laughs> <laughs> really? Because I don't. Okay. Torterra, I'll give you a hint since you're a Pokemon fan too. She, she has the same type of Pokemon as Brock. Oh. <laughs> do you know who I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Yes. And dang, does she got hot butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Well, most, wow. most of the female gym leaders do, don't they? Yeah, but she especially. 
wow, really? We're we're going there. Yes. You get on us for having dirty minds, and now suddenly we're all talking about... <laughs> hey, if she's going to mention female Pokemon gym leaders that are pretty looking, then yeah, I'm going to hop on that. <laughs> um, you, you know, uh, carrying on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, carrying on before this gets any more dark. Yeah, talking about... Talking about hot butts, we have one on the screen right now. Ash's really? mom. What's the hot butt on the screen? <laughs> Ash's mom. Yeah. Yes, we see Ash's mom looking at the crystallized fortress. And she's thinking, oh my goodness, the father's gone too? Wait a minute, let me get this picture that I've known him for, for a very long time since I was a high school girl. <laughs> oh, and then she decides to go over there to check up on how the young girl's doing. But, okay, I just want to point this one out, because pretty much, if you think about the news people are the real villains here, because as soon as Ash's mom gets there, they start filming her with the news camera, and then Molly sees him, and then she's like, I want a Molly too. <laughs> okay, here's the screwed up thing. It's like, okay, um, it's implied here that uh, Molly's mom has moved on to the afterlife, has met her maker, has gone on to the river sticks and so on and jumping ahead we see her being resurrected by monster reborn what the hey <laughs> oh that was again we deal we delve into the story behind the story uh i i too am skipping ahead but the the head writer for this he basically was very frustrated that the, i think the studio mandated oh wow that ending scene that the mom comes back because he asked the very real question if her mom was in the hospital or just elsewhere, why would she want to take someone else's mom rather than go get my real mommy? Yeah, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. That was a great frustration. Yeah, I, yeah. I feel that too because the more you think about it, the logic of the, the bounce of logic here is like, okay, um, mom's not here, so let me go get a better, newer mom. Okay, what? Well, not only that too, even at the beginning when the father's with her and like, I don't know if he ever told her what happened to the mother. Like, no one really ever mentions the mother. And this, oh, then, she like, was at the hospital. Yeah, it's like, if you, why, if you, I'm pretty sure if one of you mentioned where the mother is, then Molly wouldn't want to steal someone else's mother. I, I think the mother got the bubonic plague. She got better. <laughs> I believe the writer for this is uh, Takeshi Shudo, which I'm probably horribly mispronouncing. Shudo, it sounds about right. But he's be like... Why would you put the mother back in when we clearly established that she's no longer with them? Oh, goodness. Are we saying, oh, I like that mommy better. She's got more booty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nor <laughs> Norman, you're getting really into this. <laughs> you see what I mean? Uh, well, carry on, Tara. Then, then, oh, here, he, here's he's... the difference between me and Norman in this case. I just say, yeah, she's got a fine ass. But then there's Norman like, Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's having some deja vu back in his high school days where he talked with his buddies and be like, oh, his mom is so hot. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> or he's just, watched, he's just watching uh, Bayonetta again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tempt me. It's like, Norman, if, if you were coming to BabsCon, you would buy all of those Bayonetta prints. No, no man, no, 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 no. See, I'm not mean. I want people to enjoy the Bayonetta as much as I do. So everybody should mm. share the love of the B.O. He says that, but deep down he wants Bayonetta all to himself. Oh yeah, that's all, yeah. So true. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure if he had an Entei, just like Molly, he'd tell Entei, Hey, Entei, I want a mama. And then Entei goes to get Bayonetta for him, just like Molly does for... Uh, Alright, just like Entei does for Molly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, anyway, carrying on. We have so long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... As I was saying, yes, Molly does send Entei to go get Ash's mom because she wants a mama. It's like, okay, really? this is kidnapping at a whole new level. The kid is taking the mama away. And Ash, you know, tries to chase Entei, but it doesn't work out. Yep, yep. Uh, he fails. He fails a lot. Still. Yes, he fails so badly. Mm -hmm. But this is where the, the news redeems itself because who sees this kidnapping action? Oh, I think it's Charizard. Yes. Yes, the single, the single greatest of Ash's Pokemon. Totally, totally agree. Go ahead. Except for Definitely Greninja, a fan favorite. <laughs> yeah, but Greninja didn't exist in this time. <laughs> I was just pointing things out, man. Greninja's the best. Like time. hell, look at During him. This time. 
I'm I, not I, jealous just because Ash has a good ninja. I mean, he had a Torterra too, but he didn't have a strong bond with his Torterra. <laughs> it's because the Torterra couldn't produce marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe Torterras can't produce marijuana in general in the Pokemon universe. Just imagine the cannabis industry in that world. Oh my! Well, I mean, it's uh, le- it's illegal now, not illegal, legal. Yeah, there you go. But uh, Ent- Entei, and the ease with which he can abduct someone, it, I'd like to get into this just a little later. But again, it's it's hinting what makes him so fascinating. He is a very strong example of an amoral character. Mm-hmm. And also, uh, you know what? I'm just going to wait until we reach the part of the stuff when we need to talk about it. But let's let's speed things up. Let's speed things up. Yes. Yeah, so Ash decides to go all serious, and he needs to go save his mom. He ain't waiting for no adults to go help save the day. He's a young kid that can save the day with his friends. Yeah, which are all underage. Are they? Exactly. Uh, I think they're teenagers. Wait a minute. Are they possible Power Rangers? Oh no, with attitudes. <laughs> Anyways, so they decide to go inside the fortress where Ash uses Bulbasaur and Chikorita to pull him up a waterfall. That's not slavery, is it? <laughs> oh, see, Booba, Booba is a good Pokemon, and Chico, yeah, those two are good Pokemons. The thing is, though, they're both small Pokemon. They're able to lift Ash up. Okay, I'm just going to have to ask a question well, because I'm trying to remember. And wait, during this time, Ash still has both of his starters? Yes. Yep. Huh. Uh-huh. He's got two sets. Oh, huh, okay. That, that's just... And that's why he probably needs both. Because they're so small, they need to combine their efforts. He, he actually technically has oh. all three starters. Yeah, he ha- well, Bulbasaur is a four, so he has four starters, but two grass starters. Uh, all right, all right, all right. I was just wondering. So, anywho, carry on. But back to yes, back to what we were going to, and back to what I'm saying about the news people being the true villains here. They're literally filming Ash climbing up the waterfall, and they see him. And even Molly's like, "Why is he trying to get into our house? Hmm, I wonder why he's trying to get into your house." <laughs> I-, I wonder. Mm-hmm. She even got the picture frame of like the whole family there, and Ash's mom is right beside Ash. You don't think that sparks anything to this little girl? Uh, it's all normal. It's all normal. But I love that uh, the maternal instincts uh, sm- uh, snaps Dahlia out of her trance. It's like, you can tell for that right now! <laughs> <laughs> but Molly doesn't notice that, and she's like, Mama, is something wrong? And once Ash notices Ente, she's like, oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nothing. Yeah. But a- actually, Tartara, you- you've hit on an actual bit of uh, journalistic ethics, or journalism ethics. I studied journalism in college, and one of the scenarios they put forth is that during a hostage crisis, if a group of hostages is trying to sneak out of the building, yeah. do you show it? If you've got a camera crew, do you show them? Yes! Doing it? <laughs> well, in some ways, they say, look, keep it a, a tight shot. Don't show where they are in placement. <laughs> because flashing forward... Geraldo Rivera got escorted out of Iraq because he gave away their position on national television. And if the uh, and if the terrorists or the opposing army happens to be watching the news programs, uh, uh, they can get information. It's actually highly uh, unethical. So in a way, the uh, journalism crew covering this event, they're being incredibly unethical. Wait a minute. You took journalism yes. in college? But I never inhaled. <laughs> yeah, I was going to answer the damn question. <laughs> it's like, did you or didn't you? Like, what? What? Yeah, I had a bachelor's. In, I have a bachelor's in communication. Huh. Oh. Oh, okay. Not journalism. All right. Well, it was a, It was part of the class. It's not ah, a right. full journalism, right. but it's broadcasting. Mm. Okay. Communicate. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah. so, so to your point here, to your story there, I mean, I, I totally agree. It's like when you see hostage and they try to escape, don't, 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 don't screw it up for them. I mean, it's a great story, something for you to get more hits and views. But nah, man, like let them be, let them try and fail. Don't help them fail. So, anyways, mm-hmm. let's continue. So Ash soon gets a phone call from that Poke Gear that Lisa gave them, and apparently there's more research on the unknown. Apparently, unknown have the ability to read the thoughts of other lifeforms, even people. 
And with Molly basically being had the only person in that building, I mean, as in Ash's mom, they're basically creating a new reality with Molly's dreams. Oh, you can only imagine what's going to happen. <laughs> oh, no. Things are going to get She's trippy. She's a child. She's in- innocent. Very innocent. At least it's not a lo- nothing all cutesy. I mean, you just got a giant crystal fortress and whatnot. <laughs> true, 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 true. And, yeah, I, I, I see here that Molly is trying to challenge Ash to a poke battle. And somehow Molly here becomes an adult. Yes, well, the thing but, I yeah. kind of don't understand is that I mean, I guess she's dreaming or... I mean, I, I guess she's dreaming because she falls asleep on Ash's mom's lap. But then later on, she's riding on Entei's back and saying that she might not be old enough to be a trainer once Entei says, you can be if you wish. And then, boom, she's a full-grown adult. Oh, she's become something worse, though. What? She's become a Mary Sue. Oh, no. <laughs> Actually, I was just about to say that. Oh, no. Look out, Silver. This is the definition of Mary Sue type Pokemon. Look, look out, Silver. She yes. she might beat you with a broom. I mean, she is a little kid. <laughs> are, are you really that surprised? Not terribly. <laughs> but, Torterra, go, do, do explain to us how is she... Mary Sue. Well, okay. See, the first battle, not really kind of a Mary Sue. I mean, Brock's Zubat versus a Flappy... Flaffy is electric type, Zubat is flying, electric is super effective against flying, so it's kind of a bad advantage there. So yeah, Brock deserves to lose that one. <laughs> yeah, but... The, but in the, the second battle... Oh, sorry, sorry. were you going to say something I'm else? just going to say the final battle uh, is like what? Gar- um, Onyx versus uh, Donphan? Like, oh no. It was actually Fanfy. Then, yeah, it was like, oh no. You see that small, fancy elephant-like Pokemon just roll right into a giant rock snake and just flings it off like it's nothing. Yep. OP. Cheats. I call cheats. <laughs> I call yeah. hacks. Yeah. yeah, she's hacking. Totally hacks. Because <laughs> it's like nothing does anything to her Pokemon. But later on, now she faces Misty. But since all of a sudden Molly's surprised that Misty, Misty is so young and she's a gym leader, now all of a sudden Molly's a teenager instead of being a full-grown <laughs> adult. How old did she think Brock was? <laughs> well, maybe old enough to know better. <laughs> yes, I mean, thank God Brock didn't obviously like. Thank God Brock didn't flirt with Molly when she was an adult right away, though, because that would have been kind of awkward. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think he's aware that you know she's just a little kid. I mean, how many brother brothers and sisters does he have? I lost count. <laughs> Twenty or so. Eh, like ten, maybe. Anyways, but I, I. All right, but I, I appreciate Brock's attitude with just like playing along with it, you know, because this is a little kid after all, a, a very powerful little kid, but still a little kid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm dying, Squirtle. Well, I'm dying of terror because this water battle features the scariest dang Pokemon in the whole known universe. Really? Like what? Oh, right. Oh, right. I remember this from the last review before it got canceled. <laughs> Mant- Mantine, which even that Mantine. name just sounds wrong. It's actually Mantine. Well, whoop da friggin' do. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this part. This thing, this horror of the depths, this Cthulhu spawn, has the creepiest dang face. Really? I thought it was adorable. Uh, Mantine looking... is adorable. You can surf on it in Alola. And it'll drag you to the depths where it'll drown you. The only thing that, that... did scare me, though, was that Kingdra. Uh, that Mantine, it's, it's just the eyes say, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> And you, you you know what you I'm going to do? You, you know what I'm actually going to do? Like before Bab's gone now? I'm going to make a little print of Silver Quill just being tortured by this Mantine. <laughs> and then I'm going to sell it. <laughs> oh, that, I would only totally get on board with that one. <laughs> just, she has summoned El Diablo. <laughs> carry on, carry on. You know what? I'm going <laughs> to save this. I'm gonna save this progress on Moondancer, and then I'm gonna get started on drawing this. <laughs> the, Mont- the, the Monta Diablo. He wants his black pearl. Oh, my. Uh, <laughs> this is- yes. 
Moving on, while that battle's going off, Ash makes it to his mother with Molly still sleeping. And Ash is like, oh, mom, we gotta get out of here. Okay. But instead of just leaving the girl to sleep and just sneak away without causing any disturb disturbance, uh, Ash's mom decides to wake up Molly. And then saying, oh, uh, I'm gonna be going now. Bye. And Molly's like, no, you're staying. And then spikes everywhere. Which is one of the great visuals in this. I mean, the fortress was was intimidating at night because it was all dark purples. But then we get into these very pastel and serene dreamscapes. And now we're right back to the dark stuff. The environment and the tones in it really set the mood. And visually, it's beautiful. True, true. That's so true. Even with the music, it makes it give you that feeling. But here's the thing. It's still better than Twilight's Castle. <laughs> oh, shut's fired. I mean, it's not like that they're branding it or anything. Be like, buy our toys. I I would totally buy that though. Like when I was a kid, I would have loved to have something like that. Just saying. Anyway, yes. So Ash is just about to get his mom, but then a giant crystal blocks him, and then Ash is like, "I'm gonna face you, Ente." The, and this is where it gets really tense because Ash is facing off against Yugi. Now it's time to duel. <laughs> yeah, and here's the thing. Here's here's the logic for um, Entei here. Like Entei is not really Entei, the legendary Pokemon. This is a manifestation of the unknown, where it's just the thought of a little girl. So no matter how strong Ash's Pokemon are, he's going to lose because. Ash is facing a Mary Sue in this kind of scenario here right now. Kind of like a Mary Sue. Yeah, always wins. I mean, the power is just overwhelming. I know he's a legendary, but he doesn't have to be that overpowered. And some legendaries do lose. Yeah, like G the, the Wish Pokemon. Exactly. This does set up for one of the coolest fights, though, with the triumphant return of the Charizard. Yeah, yeah. But his his uh, entrance, though, I mean, kind of cutting it close there last minute. Like, was he just standing off to the side waiting? Hmm, I'm going to play for my dramatic entrance. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You never know. All I know is that, you know, the, the terror I feel at an at a undersea manta ray Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, which I'm going to I'm gonna profit off of. <laughs> is it? Is only uh, is only offset by the sheer awesomeness of a fire dragon. <laughs> well, thank you. Battling uh, whatever the heck Entei is. I think he's a fire lion because he does roar like wine. Oh, there you go. But it's so cool. <laughs> Actually, uh, kind of getting... I mean, I know video games aren't canon to the anime, but I just have to say this. Because in the movie, Entei does roar a lot. And in the Pokedex, it does say that... It is said that when it roars, a volcano erupts somewhere around the globe. So he roars and the ring of fire just lights up. <laughs> but here's the thing. Uh, this Entei is not the real Entei. True, but it's not like... Because like, his attacks are real, he feels real. I mean, he, he's kind of real, but not fully real. Yeah, but it's just the manifestation of the unknown. That's the thing. I mean, here's the thing. When I saw Entei here, as a child watching this... I, I saw Entei and it's like, oh, that's so cool. And then, like, I remember in the future movies or whatever, so there's more Entei's and like, hey, why couldn't this Entei talk? Why does it doesn't have Dan Green's voice? Yeah, I actually thought of that too when I was little. I, when I saw the Entei in the uh, show and I thought, oh, is, is it going to be the return of this, the other Entei? And it doesn't talk. It'd be like, oh, what happened? Yeah. Entei used Pompeii. It was super, super effective and depressing. <laughs> That's that's the dark secret about this movie is that they don't know that volcanoes are erupting every time Entei <laughs> roars. Oh man! But anyway, carry on, man. Like let's like, speed up. Yes. So Entei is about to use his fatality on Charizard by about choking him first off, and then about to blast him right in his face until Molly tells him to stop because you know he'll listen to her. <laughs> and that's why I can finally talk about uh, Entei as an amoral character. He has no will of his own, truthfully. He only does what Molly wants, and he never questions the ethics of it. He is It's kind of like a genie in a lamp. He's not there to, to lead you down the right path or, uh, or to question your orders. He just does what he's told. And so he has no limits. He doesn't know, okay, I could stop this Charizard without killing him. Nope, he's going to go 100%. And that makes him both fascinating 
frightening. Not as frightening as a as a manatee. Right? <laughs> Which I I am going to profit off of. I hope I have your permission for that. You have my permission. Permission, no, but resignation, yes. <laughs> and and uh, it's it's very interesting to see him in action because he's very much a force of nature. He doesn't worry about what he should shouldn't do. He just does it. And that's that's a very interesting concept for a character, right? We don't see those characters a lot in media, besides nature shows or nature movies or movies that involve uh, destructions and whatnot. We don't really see them a lot. And uh, can you guys think of any in the recent past movies? Mm, no, I can't think of any. Yeah, it's very hard to pull off an amoral character because even a villain has some kind of creed which which they follow, even if it's just self-preservation. Ente is going to uh, support Molly to the point of his own destruction. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, like I mentioned before, Ente, this Ente is not a real Ente, and it's kind of frustrating to a point where you know that this is just a manifestation of the unknown, and it's frustrating to know that. Like, how, how do I put this? Uh, I think in Story Writing 101, they told us never to use the phrase once upon a time. I've always learned, don't say as you know. Eh, as you know. Because <laughs> really bad exposition is coming. <laughs> anyway. Yes. <laughs> so, after everyone talks to Molly and how they love Pokemon, Molly decides, I want things to be real again. No more imagination and everything. And then Entei decides, okay, it's time for me to go. Because he was created to be a father who can make her happy. But now if Molly would be happier outside, then Entei has to go. And he, he's accepting that. It's not like he's saying, no, Molly, you have to stay. Let me protect you, this and that, blah, blah, blah. But then all of a sudden, crystal spikes everywhere because the unknown are angry yeah we we need to learn our abcs and one two trees well apparently they're not angry but the way i see it they kind of are because apparently they've generated so much psychic energy they can't control it (laughs) but later on we see that they're trying to get through the unknown and every time they destroy the barrier they bring up a new one and then when ash tells the unknown to let them out they almost kill ash by putting a spike right under him (laughs) How lovely. So that's why it's a like, okay, Professor. Picture. It's, like, it's like, okay, Professor, you say that they, they, they're losing control and they can't control it, but yet they, they're doing all this stuff to prevent them from leaving. That, that is fascinating with the unknowns. The, the unknowns are, I won't say that they're immoral. It's just that they're, I won't say they're villains. Like, what, what do you call them even? Like, they're, they're not, <laughs> they play a big part, but we don't see them at all. Oh, so what are they? They're an uh, unknown. Uh, true. We can't know what they're thinking behind those big, big <laughs> eyes. Yep, they're a mystery. Yep. yep. Reminds me of a main. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but are you really that scared of Mantine? <laughs> oh, Mantine. Uh, no comment. <laughs> but still, I think he is. But still, um, it seems that with the unknown, like they're they're not letting our heroes go. So. Um, it seems that Ente steps up and blasts them, and it works. Yay. Ente comes to save the day. Oh, wait, no, sorry, it's not Ente, it's Yugi! Yay. Believe in me, because my name is Dan Green. <laughs> and it's true, if you believe in Dan Green, anything is possible. Yay! And it seems everything is back to normal. Cool. Yep, and then Molly's back outside and everything is back to normal. All the crystals are gone. The unknown went back to the unknown realm. The father is out of the unknown realm. Everybody gets a happy ending. Even in the credits, we see that Molly's mother is just randomly back. (laughs) No mention of her throughout the whole movie except that, you know, I want a mama and now she's back. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I love my mama. (laughs) And there she is. And Molly has a Teddy Ursa. Yay, wait, 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 a real... Which makes me happy, because I actually really like that Pokemon. It's a very cute Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, now I only... Because we reviewed a rock hoof and a hard place last last time, <laughs> I'm thinking of is chucking that bear into space where it becomes a constant. <laughs> oh, that's true. Teddy Ursa, you know, yeah. Ursa. Mm-hmm. I, I, I can't help yeah. it. Let's connect the dots. Connect the dots. La, 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 la. <laughs> And with that, that's the end of uh, Pokemon Movie, Spell of the Unknown. Yay! 
uh, Norman, what are your th- final thoughts on this movie? This movie was a lot of fun watching it as a kid, but watching it as an adult with 20 questions is like... Uh, sorry, yeah, true, 20 questions, and also knowing certain things about certain aspects of this movie is like, wait, Molly is the person fueling the fuel for the unknown to do stuff, and the unknowns are the quote-unquote villains for this? Like, this is frustrating. And... Technically, there's no real antagonist besides Molly. I mean, if you really think about it, Molly's not even the antagonist. Well, she's an antagonist in the fact that she's a a force working against the main characters, but she's not a villain. That's that's the thing. I mean, it's a fascinating way to tell the story, and it's really interesting, and I do appreciate that. But at the same time, too, it's frustrating where you know that nothing's really going on, like nothing's really happening or you know, there's nothing's really doing anything I, I i think it's like one of those movies like wreck it rolf where there's no real bad guy it's just the needs and wants of the characters there was a bad guy in wreck it ralph well i think he's talking about yeah, wreck sorry, it ralph, too. Oh. too i was gonna say it's like king candy yeah, was yeah, the sorry, main villain like my, what that, the that's, hell that's my bad like wreck it rolf too <laughs> but like yeah, like I mentioned before, this this movie was not bad, but it was just frustrating watching it as an adult. Yeah. Anywho, next person. Yes, how about you, Silver? What do you think of this movie? Well, I mean, first you see the Pokemon, like, aww, and then you're like, ooh, with all the crystals, and then you see Entei, you're like, aww, and then you see the man type, like, ah! <laughs> You are literally the only one who would react that way. And then and then it's Charizard versus Entei, like, yeah! <laughs> And then you're, and then you're, it's the touchy reunion. Molly goes free. It's like, aw. And then the mom comes back. You're like, what? I, I really enjoyed this movie for, uh, its visuals. The visual style was great with the crystals reflecting the mood and Molly's emotional state. The visual spectacle of like when Molly is holding an underwater battle, but you can breathe because this is all in her imagination. It's almost carte blanche to just have this fun over the top visuals. And it all makes sense because you understand this isn't trying to follow the real world. This is a children's imagination. And it's it's beautiful and terrifying. Especially when she hits any emotional state that's not happy. Mm-hmm. That's especially terrifying. Especially. And so, although I find it funny, we have not once remarked on Team Rocket. Who now? That's true. <laughs> uh, they, they were there. They were slapstick. They were fun. But you could edit them out of the movie and they would affect nothing. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Like, the team, team Rocket for this one is kind of terrible because they're just there. The only point where they're they... They're just shoehorned yeah. in just for the sake of it. Yeah. The only point mm-hmm. where they matter, like they really, really matter when, was when they were trying to save Ash from falling down. And then well, that's pretty much of, it. <laughs> and then a bunch of fourth wall breaking comedic stuff other than that not really much and i can't wait to mm-hmm. see them in the 3d movie it'll be interesting jesse's still got a nice butt though <sighs> so that's all that really matters to me stop it <laughs> you know what i wish they did do now i wish they remade the third movie in cgi or whatever so that way you can see man time <laughs> <laughs> away from me you three-dimensional horror <laughs> How about you, Safi? What did you think of the movie? Oh, I, I already basically say it all that I can say. All I'm doing right now is just laughing at Silver's un- irrational fear of Mantine. Where did he touch you, Silver? <laughs> Where did he touch you? In my fear center. <laughs> so, so, you literally have nothing to fear and you're just doing it. Just, Okay. <laughs> I'm looking for my sword. Steve Irwin must be avenged. <laughs> I don't get it, but okay. I, I still Me, enjoy what? this movie to this day. I think it's basically in my top three of the original Pokemon movies. Mm, all right, all right. A- at least before they entered the Hoenn scene. I don't really care for Pokemon movies after, like, Hoenn came out. Anyways... Mm. Well, that's kind of like me, actually, because this was pretty much the last Pokemon movie I saw when I was little, because later on, the Hoenn movies didn't really catch my attention. I just stopped watching it. Actually, when the Hoenn game came out, I kind of gave up on Pokemon for a bit until the fourth generation came, and then I got back into it. Wait, didn't you, like, 
watch Pokemon Forever or Pokemon Heroes? Nope. Oh, really? I, I, wait, Pokemon, that's the green thing, little thing, right? Yeah, some would be. Uh, yeah, I've never the seen it. That, one. Fairy. That, that one was fun. Like, that movie. And and you didn't see the one with Latias and Latios? No. That one was a fun movie, oh, too. Oh, we need to get you to watch that. But no, I'm, I'm <laughs> talking about Celebi. Like, I like that movie because Onion Fairy. It's, it's a time paradoxal movie. Onion Fairy. Like Terra, Silver, you guys should just go watch it for funs because it is a lot of fun. Like it, 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 it raises a whole lot of questions. <laughs> it's not that great, but okay. Yeah, true, but it's time paradox. Like that's so much fun. I love that. Snake, do you realize what you've done? <laughs> you've created a time paradox. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Back to my final thoughts, because I just basically stated about my opinion. But my final thoughts is, I really enjoyed looking at back at this movie and listening to the music, because the music is so epic, especially when uh, Charizard's fighting Entei with that big, huge, epic battle. And even the story, like, Molly's... Now that I'm older and I, I'm not really blaming Molly for being the villain, so now I know that, you know, it's not her fault, really. I mean, she's young. She don't know, she don't know any better. <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And I'll take the baton back, Tara. Thank you for hosting. Yes, you can take the outro. <laughs> I do have one thing to say, oh. though. I can now call on my Pokemon friends like Manti to go against Silver. <laughs> yeah, why dare? <laughs> I, I can't oh, wait to capitalize on this <laughs> one day. Oh, boys. But anywho, um, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's podcast? Well, now that we've delved into the terrifying world of Pokemon with Manti... <laughs> And, and apparently di- discovered that that Safi has a thing for the booties. <laughs> yeah, booty, booty, booty. Safi used booty call. <laughs> it's super no. <laughs> Oh, God, no. I believe we're headed back to the ponies to talk about what lies beneath. Oh, mantine. I'll tell you, it's a mantine. <laughs> it's beneath the waves just waiting yeah. to take you down. Yeah. No. No, this is, we're, we're doing What Lies Beneath as the student six encounter the Tree of Harmony. This this episode is going to be fun because we get to see the tree telling our students what to do. <laughs> oh, and even better, I get to, we get shipping. So oh, much shipping. Yeah, that, that, that is a lot of fun. Like the shipping between uh, Gallus and Silver, Silver Stream, was it? Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, yeah. Silver Stream. Yeah, oof, much funsies. Oh, yeah, but that will be next week's episode review so yeah that'll be a lot of fun so anywho if you have any questions concerns or suggestions for the show you can contact us at com. you can also reach us on the twitters the twitter account for the show is at the mbs show and as for me it's at norman sanzo uh silver where can the good people find you hiding in my closet in the corner <laughs> with a baseball bat <laughs> making sure the man team does not find me <laughs> man time <laughs> Actually, Manti- you know what I'm going to do? I'm I'm actually going to go out of my way to try and find a plushie on eBay and then send it and then give it to you for BabsCon. Oh, yes, do that. Oh, <laughs> It'll make wow. me so happy. Oh, wow. And then I'll film it. <laughs> well, but you already set it up. He'll, he'll be expecting it now. I'm pretty sure he'll forget later on. Uh, uh, I You never forget a face like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did for the longest time up until this review. Oh, no, I just repressed the horror. <laughs> Watch, uh, next and... next drawing I'm going to make is of Silver Cole hugging Mantine. <laughs> <laughs> Lies and slender. And I'm just in the back <laughs> laughing and be like, yes. <laughs> but anyway, you, you you can all find me on the Twitters under Silver Quill, uh, on DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. Uh, do a search for YouTube uh, on YouTube for After the Fact or The Silver Quill. And I shall appear like a man time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't expect it. And every Wednesday, I will. You can find me on a Quest Daily, posting either a comic review or an editorial. Nice, 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 nice. Those are worth to check it out. And also, Safi, where can the good people find you? You you can find me torturing Silver Quill with a bunch of man time pictures at, at Anne Christie via Twitter. 
YouTube, DeviantArt, just just look me up. You'll you'll look you'll eventually find something if you just look up Anne Christie. <laughs> and while you're at it, if you want to help me pay for that Mantine plush in order to bring out Silver's Gray Sphere, you can donate a coffee to me. It's <laughs> only three dollars each. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, they can find me under Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortera1324. And they can also find me on my Patreon page. Awesome, awesome. And Patreon page is under Tortera1324? Yes. Did I ever mention that? Nope, you didn't say that. Like, if you say everything from above is the same, then it's implied. Oh, oops, my bad. Alright, no problem. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvaLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash The MBS Show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also Master of Black. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. I am going to torture the Silver Quill with a bunch of antines. And I am the Pokemon that's rarely hosted before. <laughs> Yay. Let us all salute that Torterra has hosted his first NBA show. Yay, and it was a Yay! success. Oh, thank you, thank you. You love me. You really love me! Yeah, we do! So, anywho, we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the US show. See ya! Adios! Bye bye! Bye bye! Now, if you excuse me, I'm gonna go watch some Batman time. <laughs> oh, great. I am so over. Look! There's that epic! It's a wild man time! Yeah! Let's catch it! And then make Silver hug it! Those unblinking soulless eyes, that puckering mouth that says, I'm going to eat your soul.